You with the green eyes, you kick like a cannon, shine like the morning star. Since you came along, in a sleep is sacred now. We're on a mission to Mars. Welcome to the Need to Know Music Show with me, Ronan McManus, here on Switchbox TV. And today I'm joined by an English singer songwriter from Nottingham who's released two studio albums to date, has been nominated for a music award, his debut single was Record of the Week on two of the most pre prestigious BBC radio shows consecutively. Please welcome Sam Beaton. How are you, mate? I'm great, thank you. What a build-up. Yeah, well, that's all your achievements right there and then. <laughs> <laughs> that so long ago, I'd forgotten about them. Uh, that's pretty cool, though, being Record of the Week on uh, was it Joe Wiley and Scott Mills. Yeah, like one, I think it was like uh, one week after the other. And I remember the label being really excited about that. I didn't really understand why it was important, but. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you got the music, the nomination for the BT Digital Music Award. You got beaten yeah. by Kylie. I did, which is, which is fine. That's right. Fine, I'll just take that. Oh, brilliant. I'll, t I'll, take, I'll take that. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. I can't remember who else was nominated, but it didn't really matter. It was a, it was a Kylie Award. The Kylie Award. Did you get? <laughs> but did you get to go Mo to the? Did you go to the award set? Was it the award ceremony and all that kind of stuff? Was it all? Yeah, all that I did go to, Yeah, I did go to the awards, and it was. I think it was at the Roundhouse in oh, uh, Camden. Great venue, that. Yeah, yeah great. I, I think we played live, and it was on the TV and all, all that business. So yeah, it was it was good fun. Um, needless to say, I I never got nominated again. But uh, I don't, I don't <laughs> think it even exists anymore. The BT Digital Awards. BT Digital Music Awards. Yeah. Oh yes. Well, um, how have you been these last few months? Um, I've been up okay. down and all that. Yeah. Yeah, I've I've been um I've been great. I I um I was doing lockdown anyway since about two thousand and nine. Um, so I, I'm really, um, I'm really comfortable with um, staying at home and never leaving, apart from when you need to get food and stuff like that. So, yeah, I, it's absolute heaven for me. Obviously, it's a terrible situation, but but yeah, I'm I'm habitual in this the, the situation. Proper, proper artistic recluse, mad That's mad right. genius in your hovel. Is that what? Is that how how it depends well, on imagining it? A recluse in a hovel, absolutely. I don't know about the other bit. <laughs> so, um, uh, how's it? How did it affect you? Like musically, were you making music at the? Uh, what was your plans for twenty twenty that have kind of been scuppered? Yeah, well, really, at the start of twenty twenty, like at the start of most years, um, I I'd have, I didn't really have a plan. Um, I think um, you see. Uh, one thing about me is I, I really need a kick up the ass to to do anything. Um, so really, I think the the pandemic and all the stuff going on, people losing their jobs and the economy and losing their gigs, especially in the live music scene, um, sort of boosted me on to do something. Um, so yeah, I, I have plans now. But it is is as a result of everything that's happened. Really, it sort of made me realise. Well, you you can't just take things for granted a little bit, and um, and that I should just really do more. So yeah, I, yeah. I've. Uh, I Going to say you've because uh, you've had you've had a, you had a bit of a break. Yeah. So your first album was two thousand and eight. Second album, 2015. So there's a bit of a break between those, and now it's been five years to, to now. Um, yeah. Is is it by design? Do you, do you do other things, or is it just that you know? I don't know how how, how your life works, or I don't know. Yeah. How, what's the sort of what's your sort of writing um, and music creation sort of like schedule like? Well, really, it's um, it's very um. For a period of time after after my first album and all the kind of the Radio One stuff, um, I I fell out of love with it, um, 
and decided um, to not to not sort of honor the rest of the contract with um, with Sony. Sort of walked away from that because um, I just I wasn't really um, um, overly enamored with the sort of direction that it was taking. Um, and so I then decided to do um, like a direct fan, direct to fan sort of thing, um, which is, I guess, in about 20, 2010, 2011. And that was called The Record Club. She'll raise you to the floor. And we did that for about um, three years. And basically it was like um, we did um, 12 releases in a year um, on CD um, direct to through the post um, and we had um, a whole bunch of um, subscribers um, and I did that for a long time and that that sort of culminated in this thing which is like a collection of all of it um, okay. and one of the things about that is we, we said we weren't going to release things on other stuff so it was like exclusive just for fans so yeah. as a result there hasn't really been anything that I've released on the internet. You know, it's not been on Spotify, ah, stuff like that. It's funny you should mention that because I've just, I mean, I've just started a Patreon and I'm doing exactly that with my, I've got, I've got like a band and then I've, right. that's kind of got, I've got a little small deal with that, with a, with a, with an independent. And I've, yeah. I've also had, I've also, I've also had my own thing going on underneath all of that over the years. Yeah. And I've now made that exclusively Patreon uh, backers. Yeah. Do that. So, was uh, was the record club thing? Was that your own invention, or was it an existing platform? No, it was our own thing. Um, and I remember being dissuaded <laughs> by a lot of people to do it. But the the sort of idea caught on after that, and I think I remember uh, some of the first bands to sort of do. It. I think McFly ended up doing something like that, and um, okay. and um, and then there was this thing called. Um, is it a vinyl me or something? Oh, flying vinyl. Send vinyl. Yeah. So, flying so vinyl, it, yeah. it was kind of pre all that. Um, and really people really, really loved it. The only, only thing about it was it was, we had to, you know, record and release basically like an, a little, an EP every month. So you were just constantly yeah going so did you have was it just one song or was it was it did you do was it was it was it, it was an ep it was like two or three four songs it was basically, yeah it was basically you get one song which we, which we promote it'd be the like the headline thing kind of like the single of it and we make we do a little video about it and then we'd um and then yes yeah, two other tracks three other tracks um so it was, it was a lot of work and um so by the end of it it was it was a bit a little bit burnt out from it but um, people really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. The only thing I would say from an artist's perspective, anyone thinking of doing that, is you just have to kind of keep up the quality. Because if you get this sort of attitude that, oh, God, I've got to do another, and you, you end up putting out crap, you know, that's no good for anyone. It's so, funny. I, I looked into a few different ideas of that before, before I decided to do Patreon, which I kind of deliberated over for a long time. I kind of yeah. had this idea about this 12, this, it was going to be a song a month and then eventually you've got an album and each, then each album would be named after the year they were released in and, and it was going to be yeah, a thing. Yeah. So was it good? I mean, you'd obviously built up a bit of a fan base from the first album and from the deal with Sony and from that time when you had the radio play and all that. So it was a matter yeah. of sort of retaining that because really I think that's all artists want to do is to have an audience for the stuff they're making. So was there, did you get a good take up on it? Was a lot of people subscribed? Was was it making a living? It was, it was, and um, I think it came as a result of 
it, one, one thing you have to understand about me is I went from school to major labels and really went straight into big stuff. And then towards the end of that, you know, I'm, you know, I'm only a teenager at the time, so I'm only just beginning to learn why why stuff's done and and so i remember speaking to a friend of mine um booger guitarist and he was saying um he was saying oh make sure you get your mailing list make sure you get hold of that mailing list that they've got and all of a sudden all that stuff started to occur to me like oh it's you very to... young though for that to, it's very you're very young to be having to think along those lines but yeah it's a great it was a it's a really young age to be thinking i can take this on myself i don't need to have a, a label which yeah. is kind of the norm now isn't it when you think you know definitely it wasn't wouldn't have been then no uh, for taking that on did you, did, did you get the mailing list is the big so question. yeah we, we got the mailing list by slightly nefarious means may I say. <laughs> 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 we, had to, we had to um just take a record company employee out for a drink and things got sorted. But so we, we did get a good um, take up on it. And um, yeah, it was, it was through that, that I really gained a respect for how hard it is and how important it is to stay, be, be connected to the people who are listening to your music, most of all. Um, because that's all that matters. And I think people can sort of lose that a little bit when they, when they begin. It's, you know, I'm sure it's the same for you. You do it for yourself. You're making music because it's fun for you. But then there comes a point where it's either, it's either forced on you where people say, this is great, you have to release it. And you end up in a world where stuff's, important all of a sudden and really it's your fun thing you know yeah so yeah um so we did that and it and it did it did pay the bills um for a long time and um and like anything you know you can't keep repeating yourself so we we sort of put that down and really it's been a i've been on a break from it for about three or four years now so really now's for me is, is sort of reconnecting with, with those people and those fans and making, making new stuff now. So it went on for quite a while. You did it for a number of years. How many years did you do it? Yeah, we, we did that for about three years. And we managed to, um, yeah, we managed to get um, listed on Radio 2 and things like that at the time. So we, we sort of managed to push through and, and get some proper stuff done a few tours and things like that so like i say it was a lot of hard work and it you know what it wasn't just me i had some absolutely phenomenal people around me to mostly cajole me to do it which is yeah. a, a running theme you know <laughs> <laughs> people um, with cattle prods to kind of give you a quick uh, you know absolutely that's i need people to do that yeah <laughs> So, um, I mean, was it a musical upbringing for you? Well, I mean, was it a musical family you, you, you grew up in? When did music come into play for you? Yeah, my, my dad um, was, was in bands um, in the 70s when he was young, 70s and 80s. And, um, and uh, yeah, my mum's musical, really a, a big family and lots of bands and all, all sorts of things throughout the year. So it was very easy to get into. Um, my yeah. dad taught me to play and all that stuff. So, so yeah, just a house full of musical instruments. So, and then yeah. there, was there, was there a kind of a local scene to kind of get involved in, um, around, in and around you when you were kind of starting to get to the point where you wanted to play live? What was, yeah. the, what was the situation with venues, other bands um, and that kind of thing? Well, it's very different because um, now, um nottingham where, where i'm from where i grew up uh, now it's absolutely huge it's brilliant there's so many venues so many artists and there is a scene but back then it was absolute desert for for music and for artists and things like that anyone trying to do anything locally so really there was a little bit of a vacuum here and i i did 
I did the gigs I could around here, got on support gigs and things like that. But really, there wasn't the the local interest in it from a from a a media standpoint that there is now. So how how yeah, far would you have to go to get to 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 sort of do a gig? I mean, what would be the nearest sort of place that had a scene? Well, I'm, we just went. It was London, really. Never get tired of telling me how I don't understand you, and the problem is, you know, I think I do. I was just trying to name that face. So familiar, it's so out of place. Now I know what you look for. It's too late for me now. I know what you look for. Uh, you know, I used to I used to get up to Manchester and where else? Um, Sheffield, Sheffield had oh, a little yeah, bit yeah, yeah. of thing then. Um, but here was r really disappointing. But that's all changed. It's it's absolutely incredible now. Um, Nottingham, but um, so it was, it was a weird one because uh, it's sort of a vacuum. I I just went to London, played a few gigs, and then got my record label interest going, and then really was treated by people in Nottingham as if I'm a foreigner, you know. <laughs> yeah. a lot of people, well, that's uh, always, yeah, that's always the thing, you know, they were saying you've just turned your back on your roots and all that sort of stuff. Well, like, exactly, yeah. You, Provincial scum. <laughs> 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 so what sort of venues were you playing in London when you, when you, when you first came down? <clears throat> um, I was playing things like the Bedford in yeah. Balham, which is really popular. Um, played that a few times. It's a great, it's a it's a great place, isn't it? That you know that. Did you do oh, the the midweek nights where you do like two songs each half? All or, them. Uh, yeah, all them. Yeah, I was chatting to who was I chatting to the other, the other day? I was chatting to someone. We were t we were talking about this about the Bedford and how fantastic, um, that how supportive it is and have and and yeah. you know it's well attended. People listen, man. That's scary. Mm -hmm. People they That's silence when you're playing. I mean, it's it's. But the, the respect for the artist is is so apparent there, and Tony Moore, yeah. is a brilliant person for that. To have to Absolutely, host it. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I've seen a lot of people turn up there and play there for the first time, and sort of freeze <laughs> because normally they play a gig and everyone's sort of laughing through it, and 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 suddenly the, the people are listening and stuff like that they close the and, bar um, don't they they close the bar during the set so you don't you can't you can't get a drink yep. during the set so it's just it's just it's just yeah they're watching you people yeah. are watching you it's great yeah. and it's a, it's a real great place to to sort of get some nerve you know if you're not very confident play the bedford a few times and you'll get yourself yeah. some iron nerve <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah so, look, what, look, so, you, so you were sort of traveling all around London at that at that time. Um, yeah, um, Slaughtered Lamb. Um, yeah, God, so many venues. There's so many that have gone now. Um, Raymond's Review Bar, Soho Review Bar. You ever play that one? Oh no, I haven't played the that. Old, no. The old strip club. It's it's in in Soho, but it's an old strip club. Well, it may be a it may be it a, still be a strip a club. It depends what night you go. <laughs> yeah, it depends what night you go exactly. Um, we used to play there a lot, um, but yeah, all that stuff. The, the Ronnie Scott's upstairs. Yeah, we do that one a lot. So, what was the big one that you remember around that time? What was the gig that really sticks out in your mind of that time? Did you, you know, was there one you, that kind of really was there kind of one that really you feel like I've I know what I'm doing here now. I'm I've I've sort of made it. Yeah, well, not made it, but you know, I've I've, I've landed. Yeah, I, I remember a particular gig. I don't know if you remember um, a venue called the Water Rats. Yep. You know yeah, that? yeah. Um, the, that's right. And the, the, the roof, the ceiling collapsed on the stage a couple of years oh. back, which oh, is absolutely yeah, yeah, horrifying. Yeah. 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 Bringing the house uh, down. That, exactly, yeah. I wasn't playing that night, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember a gig there was absolutely jam packed out and we had um i remember sitting backstage and listening to jeff buckley like a, a pre-gig ritual that i had 
um, and I remember going out and it was it was absolutely packed. It was a summer's night, so that all the doors were open, um, and we had Greg James, um, we had Nick Grimshaw, a load of radio people, um, a lot of fans though for the first time, which was most important. People singing along, stuff like that. And I really enjoyed that one. I, I mean, I don't know about any sort of made it moment because um you know i i don't really think so i don't think people i don't think i'll just think that way i was more i was more thinking that you think i've landed i i've, I've, I've this is sure this, yeah. is good. this is different this is now a well, new level yeah it was definitely one of those um yeah so it'll be the water rats pre house coming down pre <laughs> yeah and you've done some great support tours tours or support gigs yeah, uh, the script, James Morrison, Scouting for Girls. Was that in that sort of the time when you had the deal going and just when the radio was? Was it around? Was it around that after that first album? Was it around that time? All those gigs? Yeah, we well, we've done a few. Uh, the script definitely was because they were they were signed at the same label at the same time, and uh, we did a a tour together. Um, that was really. Uh, strange to think of now because very very tiny venues almost almost pubs almost pubs with the script um, wow. and one thing I was really impressed about with the script was that they had all the gear you know all the kind of big cold place stadium gear the commitment they'd be playing a <laughs> pub and they'd have all the kind of the compressors and the all the stuff to make big stadium sounds um and i just squeezed like, in they squeezed it into those little venues yeah and i i'd be doing i'd open up for them and just mooch on with an acoustic but um but yeah that that was a great one um but you know we we've done um we've done quite a lot of tours after the fact us over the record club um we went out on a few um yeah, Katy Perry. They'd have been harder to get because you were getting them yourselves and no, no sort of record exactly. label management. So yeah, exactly. that's quite an achievement. So what sort of names, what sort of, what sort of gigs you did, you did you do with those ones? We Katy went Perry. Um, yeah, we we did we did um, Katy Perry thing. We did um, we did a tour with the guy from McFly Busted. Is it Busted? Um, Charlie. Oh yeah, it's uh, Charlie, Fight Charlie, Star Sim or something. Charlie Simpson, Charlie Simpson. Fight Star, were they called or something? The band, or was it just yeah, just that's a right. Yeah, we had a band called, we had a band called Fight, Fight Star, but I think he did a solo thing, and we okay. supported him on that, and that was absolutely ace. I mean, uh, the the venues and uh, he's got a real kind of loyal fan base, so um, so so that was really cool. Um, so how did you get uh, that? How did, how did you get those? You, was it just was it? Just, was you were, were you was managing yourself at this point? Yeah, well, I mean, with a little help from my friends, um, um, a friend of mine called um, Patrick um, Livingston, who was um, one of the first producers to work with me when I was younger, um, and we'd. Uh, I think we done a we done a video for the record club and um the guy who was in charge of Burberry the the fashion thing saw it and and we did a we did a video for them of a live video for them that they put up on their uh, YouTube channel and that seemed to just shoot us along you know a lot a lot of um a lot of new discovery from that um and then I think a lot of people got in touch with us after that, you know, because, yeah, I don't know. It's a, it was just something very different different at the time. There was a YouTube channel called um, Show, Listen, Tell or something like that. that they did, it's very, it's ubiquitous now, but they did very good cinematic looking live performances. Okay. Um, yeah, and so and so we did that video and that, that seemed to sort of step up the awareness of it and really it was pre um mostly pre instagram um, and pre um me getting over the top into social media and stuff like that so really looking back at it um it, it's amazing how we got a lot of stuff done 
it's you know, fantastic without, achievement to do that. To be fair, I mean, you've, yeah. it's really difficult to, to 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 negotiate all that stuff without kind of getting have the doors open for you. You know, definitely, definitely. And I, <clears throat> I think that's always though. I think I would say to anyone, anyone who's thinking of doing that and and wondering how to do that, you can drive yourself crazy uh, thinking about looking at other people and thinking why are they doing that and doing this well the main thing is just concentrate on your own people who love yeah. your music um because yeah. they make things happen that's what i found you know if they, if well, they love it's kind of what it, it's kind of what it boils down to after you know there's so so many bells and whistles that go with uh with the music career and you yeah. boil it down to basically all i want to do is make enough money to be able to have enough people listening to do gigs and to and to keep it being a perpetual thing that's, that's right. that I tour and I make music and I make a living. That's what it. That's what it is. Yeah. All, the, all the other stuff is just either it can be pros or cons, whichever way you look at them. Some of them, but yeah. a lot of it, you know, which, this is a the direct fan thing. Is 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 a really pure version of 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 of, of a music career in that respect. And and there's um, but um, and so this, these these plans for for going forward is this. Is it all top secret? Or are you allowed to? Uh, you, are you are you allowed to reveal anything to us right now? No, oh, no. It's, there's absolutely nothing top secret about it. It's um, it's um, <laughs> I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna do an, a five track EP. I really, I really have to just ease back into it because I've been away for a long time, and uh, I, I really don't think I can be so. Uh, bold as to just go flying back in releasing all this stuff and so I, I really wanted to just concentrate on making it good I mean you know it should always be good but just good enough to say you know this is new stuff for me and so um so I'm gonna do that um that's gonna be the next couple of months and really um just sort of reconnect and, and learn and yeah. learn what changed Le learn what's changed because um as i say now the scene here locally has changed and and the tools that people use to to create have changed um so i just need to work out how i do that how i fit into it and and without being derivative of everyone <laughs> you know because we, we i don't want to be copying everyone <laughs> so yeah i mean it's so yeah. just it's just t taking your time and just finding your finding your feet with it all again and just doing it yeah. to enjoy it okay. and just make sure you enjoy it and just enjoy making the, the, the love of making music again especially you've had, really. if you spend so long with a business head on uh, kind of running this this um record club must you know to kind of do things without that there is, is you know it's got a real potential to be something enjoyable for you and i wish you all the best with it really do thank you thank you yeah yeah um, we always we, we do always ask for a recommendation of another artist to look out for someone that people may not have known but they need to know this is the need to know music show so uh do you have a, a recommendation for everybody to go and check somebody out i do i do my my recommendation would be Ezio Lunadai, and he is um, a British Italian, but his band is called, they're called Ezio, so that's E Z I O. And um, I've um, I've been a huge fan of theirs for years since I was a child, and I always say that he's he's a sort of Van Morrison, Bob Dylan, Neil Young. That's imagine they never got discovered. Imagine you just discover them playing in playing in a bar. This this is this is Ezio. So check out Ezio. Wow. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Okay, that's, well, we'll put the, uh, the the link will be on the screen there, and we'll put links to their stuff in the description, and also links to your stuff. Um, Excellent. And is there because you're not doing the record club thing anymore? Is there any plans for that stuff to get any sort of public release or anything? I I. I think so because um, I've only just, I keep thinking, oh, people know all these songs, but you know, I've got like 25, 26 songs here on a CD that I've never even seen the light of day. I mean, 
to all intents and purposes, they don't exist in the modern world because <laughs> they're well, not on Spotify. You, you're sitting on like two to three albums there, or two, you know, a couple, am, of, yeah. couple of albums. Like you know, you, am, could, yeah. you could release them as the as the record club sessions or something like that, and have it as exactly. a a thing. You know, it would be exactly. uh, be fantastic to hear them because it's obviously been. Uh, been a real labor of love for you through the whole thing so it'd be nice for yeah. those, to see, to see those songs to see the light of day and and uh, i'm sure there'll be a lot of people watching that will be uh that'll, that will be urging you to do that oh yeah abs absolutely absolutely well, listen thank you so much for joining us uh, it's been great chat chatting to you um uh, wish you all the best and when we're back in a studio uh at some point soon hopefully we'd love to have you in to come and have more of a chat and a bit of a sing song Absolutely, Ronan. Thank you so much for, for doing this. It's been a pleasure. Good luck with everything you're doing. Uh, it sounds like you're in a really good uh, place to, to, to really start, get start back into it. So uh, wish you all the best with it, mate. All right, mate. Thank you, Ronan. Cheers, Sam. Take care, mate. Yeah. Take care. Bye.